Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to answer question number six from the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P4, June October 2020 session. Um, this is a question where we have been told that a curve C has equation y equals x to the power of sine x, um, where x and y are both greater than zero. Find by firstly taking natural logarithms and expression for dy dx in terms of x and y. So they've kind of given us an idea of how to start this question. Um, and that's because you've got x and you've got a power of sine x there. So they told us to take natural logarithms first and then find dy dx. So it's going to involve some sort of implicit differentiation. Because right now y is, is the, the function is written as what with um, y as a subject explicitly. But it's not easy for us to differentiate this uh, the way it's written. Um, so what they've asked us to do is to, <coughs> to take the natural logs, the lin of both sides, in order for us to have it in, in to write it in a way that's easier for us to differentiate. Normally it's easy to differentiate in this form, but in this case it's not because you have x to the power of sine x. So they've given us a clue as to what to do, which was kind of, um, you know, a bit kind of them. They don't have to actually tell you to do that. Um, so that's something to see for the future in case they give you a question like this and you know they just say differentiate it you should know uh, when you have something that you cannot and uh, differentiate the way it is if you have uh, something with a power like this x to the power of something like that then taking the lin of both sides will help us to differentiate it so if we take the lin of both sides you're going to get lin y equals lin of x to the power of sine x and we can now use the power law where we write lin y equals uh, sine x times lin x. Sine x times lin x. Okay, this is not part of the, the, the angle. This is sine x times lin x. Now, what we can do here is we can use um, what's called implicit differentiation. So I can differentiate this with respect this side with respect to x I can differentiate this side with respect to x now um, with implicit differentiation basically what you're doing is you're differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x I'm going to differentiate this side of the equation with respect to x and I'm going to differentiate this side of the equation also with respect to x now when you differentiate something um, a function of x with respect to x you differentiate it as normal okay so lin y becomes 1 over y you have 1 over y, but then you have to uh, multiply it by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, inside this function is y, okay? And the differential of y is, by definition, dy dx. So I have to write dy dx, okay? So that's this side differentiated. For the other side, we have um, something which we differentiate. This is a product of two separate functions. So I can use the product rule. For the product rule for differentiation, one of them is called u. So you've got sine x and the other one is called v, that's lin x. Now it doesn't matter which one is which because we're using uh, the product rule, so there's no problem. Um, <clears throat> so u dash, which is the differential of sine x, is cosine x. And v dash, which is the differential of lin x, is 1 over x. So we're going to multiply these two together. I like to do it this way. So lin x times cosine x plus sine x times 1 over x. I personally prefer to use do it this way. Most books show you, show you to do that way first, but I like to be consistent with the quotient rule. So I do this times this plus that times that. So we've got lin x times cosine x. So I have um, that's going to be lin x times cosine x plus sine x times 1 over x, which is sine x over x. So now, remember, we want to find dy dx. So I need to get rid of that y. So I say dy dx is equal to y times lin x times cosine x plus y times well I can just I can just put this as a bracket there's no problem there so y times all of this <clears throat> sine x over x and that's our expression for dy dx and that's part a done okay so taking the lin of both sides made it possible for us to uh, differentiate this using implicit differentiation so whenever you have a y term and you're differentiating with respect to x, you differentiate as normal, then you always have to write down dy dx next to it because that's, the di that's, that's basically the chain rule because you're differentiating this and then you're multiplying by the differential of what's inside the function 
and inside the function is y. So you have to multiply by the differential of y with respect to x, which is dy dx, by definition. Um, so it, it's the same thing as if you were differentiating, for example, 3x plus 2 uh, squared, and you're differentiating that with respect to x, you would say that's 2 times 3x plus 2 to the power of 1 times the differential of what's inside the function, which is 3. Okay, so you'd, you, it's the same kind of thing as, as doing that. Okay, so you differentiate the function as normal, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Same thing we're doing here with the lin y. Okay, now for part b, it says, hence show that the x-coordinates of the stationary points of c are solutions of this equation. Okay, so the stationary point is when dy dx is equal to 0. So we can say that y times lin, lin x, sorry, times cosine x plus sine x divided by x is equal to 0. So you can say y equals 0, which we don't care about. And we can say lin x times cosine x plus sine x over x equals 0. So we have to rearrange this to make it look like that. The first thing I can see we can do is multiply both sides by, <coughs> by x to get rid of the denominator. In, in which case you're going to have x times lin x times cosine x plus sine x equals 0. And then the next thing, we can get rid of the cosine x by dividing both, both sides by cosine x. If we divide both sides of the equation by cosine x, you're going to have this divided by cosine x and this divided by cosine x. And we'll see what happens is the cosine x cancels out here, so you're left with x times in x plus and sine x over cosine x, as we know from our identities, is the same as tangent of x. And we've proved this. It's just written the other way around because of the way I, I like to write my product rule. So tan x plus x lin x equals 0. So we've shown um, how it became this. Now, when they ask you to show something um, and they give you what it's supposed to be, you have to be very careful to show your steps clearly. OK, so there's the answer for part B. That was a pretty short, simple question. So that's number six finished. And now we're going to move on to question seven in the next video. If you would like to find other questions from this um, paper, you can click on the link over here, which will show for the playlist of this paper. Underneath it here, you'll have a playlist for differentiation of P4. In the center here, you'll find a an icon that takes you to um, that takes you to. Um, uh, subscribe to my channel and at the top you can find a card which takes you to another P4 paper you might be interested in. Thank you for watching and see you soon.